In this lesson, we're going to look at the trigonometric functions and determine which of them are even and which are odd. And so we should first kind of review the definition of an even function and an odd function. So a function is even if f of negative x is equal to f of x for all x in the domain. So basically, if you replace x with negative x and you get the original expression back, then you have an even function. A function is odd if f of negative x equals the opposite of f of x for all f x in the domain. And so when you replace x with negative x, you get the complete opposite of the original function. And so an example, we have f of x equals x squared. If we take negative x and replace it with x and we square it, we get the original function back. And so x squared is an even function. And on an even function, f of negative 2 and f of 2 will give you the same exact value. Now, f of x equals x cubed is an odd function because when I replace x with negative x, I get the complete opposite back. I get negative x cubed. And so for this function, if you take f of negative 2, you'll get negative 8 where if you take f of 2, you'll get positive 8. So you get the complete opposite y value when you change the sign of the x values. So I'd like to use the unit circle to evaluate the trig functions below and see if you can determine which of the trig functions are even and which are odd. But I'd like you to pause the video, use your unit circle to evaluate the following trigonometric functions. For the, for the negative 30 degrees and negative 5 pi over 6, even though those are not written on the unit circle, you know how to go in a clockwise direction and find those angles. So find those angles and evaluate them. Then turn the video on and we'll come back and look at the values. Alright, so the, fi the sine of 30 degrees we know is a half. The sine of negative 30 degrees, I would have to rotate in a clockwise direction 30 degrees, so the sine of 30 degrees would be negative 1 half. The sine of 5 pi over 6, remember to evaluate the sine of 5 pi over 6, counterclockwise direction to 5 pi over 6, and the sine is a half. The sine of negative 5 pi over 6, well I know that if I go 5, that 6 pi over 6 negative would be at negative pi. So negative 5 pi over 6 is actually coterminal with 7 pi over 6 because I'd be one fewer. So negative 5 pi over 6 terminal with 7 pi over 6 so the sign is negative 1 half. The cosine of 30 degrees would be the x-coordinate on the terminal side of 30 degrees, and that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of negative 30, again I would go in a clockwise direction, and that is coterminal with 330 degrees, so the cosine would be positive square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3 would be pi, 4 pi over 3 is right here. The cosine is the x-coordinate, which would be negative 1 half. And then the cosine of negative 4 pi over 3, well negative 3 pi over 3 would bring you to pi. If I go one more pi over 3, which would bring me up to coterminal with 2 pi over 3, and so the cosine of negative 4 pi over 3 is the x-coordinate on that terminal side, which is negative a half. The tangent of 45 degrees, again, we should know that from your other methods, but from here it's the sine over the cosine, or the y over the x. Tangent of 45 degrees is 1. If I f want to find the tangent of negative 45 degrees, I'm going in a clockwise direction, and that would be coterminal with the 315 degrees. So that's also, that's going to be a negative y over um, a positive x. 
So that's going to be negative 1. Negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by the square root of 2 over 2. And the last one, 5 pi over 3, the tangent of 5 pi over 3. brings us right here and the tangent is going to be the y over the x so it's the square root of 3 negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half which would give us negative square root of 3 so for the tangent of negative 5 pi over 3 if I went all the way around a full rotation in a negative direction that would be negative 6 pi over 3 right here so negative 5 pi over 3 would be 1 less so that would be coterminal with pi over 3. And so the tangent would be y over x, in this case the square root of 3 over 2, divided by 1 half, which would be the square root of 3. So when we look at the sine, we have the sine of a positive angle is equal to half. The sine of that negative 30 degrees is equal to negative a half. So when we replace x with the opposite of x, we get the opposite value, y value. So it happened here and here. So we can see that the sine of negative x equals the opposite of the sine of x. And that, by definition, means that sine is an odd function. The cosine of a positive angle, when we replace that positive angle with the negative angle, we can see that we get the same exact value, meaning that the cosine of negative x is actually equal to the cosine of x, which means that cosine is, a, is an even function. And for tangent, we can see that when we have the tangent of a positive angle and we take the tangent of that negative angle, we get the opposite. And this happens in both cases here. So the tangent of negative x equals the opposite of the tangent of x and that would mean that tangent is an odd function. So for example 2 we have uh, circle the correct word in blue to make the statement true. We have sine is an so we said sine was an odd function, and if the function is odd, its reciprocal is also odd. And cosine is an even function, and so the reciprocal secant is also an even function. Tangent is an odd function, so its reciprocal function is also odd. And we have the even odd properties of trigonometric functions summarized right here below. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and evaluate a few more of these now using your knowledge of the one, the special angles, and two, the even odd properties of the trigonometric functions. So since sine is an odd function, that means the sine of a negative angle will equal the opposite of the sine of the positive angle. And so we know this is going to be negative. The sine of 60 degrees you should have memorized or have a chart to help you get it uh, or memorize the chart. The cosine of an angle, uh, of a negative angle, is going to equal the same exact thing as the cosine of the positive angle because cosine is an even function. And we know the cosine of pi over 3 is a half. The tangent of negative pi over 4, since tangent is negative, that would be the tangent of pi over 4. We know that, uh, so it would be the opposite of the tangent of pi over 4. And so the tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so that would be negative 1. The last one, the secant. Since the secant is a reciprocal of cosine, it is an even function. So the secant of a negative angle would equal the secant of the positive angle. And the, the secant of pi over 6 that would be 1 over the cosine of pi over 6, and the cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2, so this would be 2 over the square root of 3, or 2 square roots of 3 over 3.